Okay, everybody out there. So, I am at the stage now where I am installing my tuners, which happen to be these Steinberger gearless tuners. So, they are gearless in the sense that they are not normal tuners that have the knob on the side where you turn the knob, which turns a gear, which then uh, turns the post, right? So this string can wrap around the post. This is a whole new conception of tuners where the string actually doesn't wrap around the post. The string actually gets installed into a little hole in the bottom of this shaft that I just pushed up. And then when you turn the shaft, it actually lowers, it descends down into the headstock. So rather than twisting the string around it, it pulls it down into the headstock. It's pretty cool. Um, the benefit of it is you get basically the equivalent of a 40 to 1 tuning ratio. To give you some perspective on that, uh, 16 to 1 is, is a pretty common tuning ratio. 18 to 1 is a stellar tuning ratio. 21 to 1 is the highest I've ever heard of. Um, that is before Steinberger. So really the highest is the 40 to 1 which we have right here. So it's really in a whole nother world all its own. Um, when I say it's the highest tuning ratio, that's actually a little misleading because it actually, it's not geared, it's gearless. So that 40 to one just means that it's the equivalent. It feels like a 40 to one gear ratio, but it's actually gearless. Okay, uh, what are we doing here? So. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm experimenting with these Steinberger gearless tuners and at the same time I'm also experimenting with countersinking my tuners using this thing here. So I'm being a little bit dangerous here experimenting with two things at once, two new things, the new uh, cool kind of tuner that I want to try out and also countersinking the tops of those tuners in there. So just to give you an idea, and by the way, I'm doing that, the countersinking is mostly for aesthetic reasons. Uh, it's also good for the finish to have them countersunk in there, at least for the long-term longevity of the finish because, um, there's a common problem in old guitars that you see with crackling and lifting around the tuners from years of the tuners resting on top of the finish and kind of being tightened down onto that finish. It crackles it and lifts the ends up. But if you actually countersink the tuner into the wood, you don't have that problem. Aside from that, I think on these Steinberger tuners, they have a really fat top to them. It's not correct to call that the washer because it's not a washer, but this top portion, hold on, my, dehumi my humidifier kicked on. I want to turn that off. It's too loud. Where was I? Okay, so this top portion of the tuner is kind of thick in my opinion, so I'm actually burying it into the headstock and I think it looks really seamless and slick that way. Just to let you know how far down it's buried, if I put this one in there, which I haven't countersunk yet. Well, actually I have to drill this. I have to drill a hole here for the set pin. Let me just do that real quick and then you can see how high up a non-countersunk tuner sits. So first I just place that on there. Give it a couple whacks with a dead blow hammer, which leaves a little mark. 
small sixteenth of an inch bit here. I'm inten intentionally angling inward a little bit, otherwise that bit is so close to the hole's edge that it slips into the hole. So now that pin has something to reference into. Don't worry, it's a brass head. It's not doing any damage. Okay, so you can see how the one I'm countersinking, I might countersink this further, but I might leave it there. And then the one in the back here is, you can tell it's sitting up on the surface. So this, in my opinion, is kind of slick and kind of cool. So I'm going to keep doing it. Now this counter boring tool here that I got is really designed to work in a drill press. And it, this is also new here in the shop. I haven't used it much, but I actually think what I'm gonna end up doing is fastening a handle to this and using it like you would use a reamer. I know it's not designed for that, but it actually works quite well that way. a lot more controlled which is what you want for something uh, something with finesse like this it's a lot more controlled than using a power tool um, definitely more controlled than hand drill but even more so than a drill press would be where this job would be a little bit diff difficult because you'd be dealing with the angle of the headstock as well oh, that's not supposed to pop out That's supposed to go in there, and then you lock it into place with the set screw. I just didn't have that set screw tight enough, apparently. A little bit further, getting close. Sounds like there's something going on out there, which is rare around here. This is, uh, sounds like we're in, you know, a downtown city area right now, but we are actually in a fairly rural location. All right, that, these look dead on, good. All right, so that's the plan. I like it, I like how it looks, I like how these tuners Feel so far I have used them a little bit before so also I like their function so I'm just gonna keep on keeping on here with these uh, with countersinking these 
And here, just to give you a little bit of a preview of this guitar, we are on the home stretch here for guitar number 85. All right, see you guys later. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.